Hey everybody, welcome back, unboxing time, and today we're here for one of my awesome favorite boxes. Today we're here to check out the February 2021 Horror Pack. Ooh. Okay, full disclosure, this is not Horror Pack. Um, this is one of those videos, I had two videos I had filmed, you already saw the hot ones, where this camera, the really good looking camera, the card corrupted on me and I didn't have that footage. I still have the top down footage, I still have the original audio. So, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna let you know all that stuff, and in a second I'm gonna play the original audio, and then I'm gonna pantomime to it, <laughs> basically, and try to sort of recreate the video for you, and where I would have cut to the stuff, I'll cut to the original stuff, you'll still get the reviews of the movies and all that kind of stuff, and then I'll just say, I'm not coming back to say bye at the end like this, um, we'll just do it, as I said, bye to the audio track. So I'm all ripping and ready to do all of that, everything else will be said in there, so let's get to the remade original video. <laughs> oh, that's right, it's Horror Pack, the remake. Can't believe I just thought of that. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's that time of the month again. It's that time for another Horror Pack unboxing. And today we're, we're, we're kind of caught up, man. We're on the ball nowadays. Um, we're here with the February 2021 Horror Pack. Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah, let's hope it's better than last month's. Um, so if you want to check out Horror Pack, I have a link in the description below. It's about like $25 a month for the Blu-ray set. You can also choose a DVD set, but the movies will be different. And honestly, too, apparently, like if you're in Canada and doing this, sometimes you get a different movie than I do is what I've been hearing. Um, but basically, they're going to curate four movies, four horror movies, every month for you. And one of those will be a Horror Pack exclusive, meaning it's only available on that format this way, at least at the time of the release. However, lately they've been using it as like an, a distribution label, and I don't know if I don't know how I feel about the movies they're picking up. They have not been strong. <laughs> Occasionally they've been strong, but most of the time. Uh. Anyways, we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna show the trailers. I'm gonna review all the movies. Hopefully, Mary will watch at least one of these with me, so she'll be in one of those reviews. And I have a link in the description below. I also have a join button for YouTube memberships. You want more movie reviews, things like that. Patreon also has memory movie reviews. Link in the description. Dollar a month, extra video every day. And of course, uh, merch store and the Discord invite. Come over there. We talk about movies all the dang time. You think I'd be movie out? I've watched like 31 movies in the last few weeks uh, for all these Golden Globe nominations. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know why I was about to pull out like every single movie for some dumb reason. But let's jump in here and let's start seeing what we get. Alright, first up we have, oh by the way, I have a huge movie collection, like over 7,000 titles, so often I get lots of duplicates out of here. But sometimes I get cooler versions, and if nothing else, that's why I like doing the reviews. It's like, here, these are the movies you're going to watch this month. I'm like, okay. So first up we have, ooh, <gasps> oh, this is, okay, I think I bought this. I don't know if I bought this or not, but this is a really good one. We have Yummy. This is an awesome, super fun zombie film. I watched it on, uh, um, I watched it on Shudder, and I, I, I know it came out. I don't know if I actually bought it or not, but if I did buy it, I don't think I got this version. So this looks like the Raven, I think they've hooked up with Raven Banner, and um, they're doing like special versions in here. I don't know, don't hold me to that. Uh, but anyways, let's take a look at the cut. I'll show you the back here, so you can get a look at that. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, this is a good one. I'm looking forward to re-watching this. That ought to be fun. Give you that nice front cover there. And hopefully the lighting's okay. I'm doing this with the sun. Uh, the sun is conflicting with the moon. You can't see my face. I made a face. Anyways, all right, let's do this, shall we? We have. Uh, let's see. Oh, let me get. Let me get in here close for just a second. Okay, show you that. Show you that. And a tasty zombie comedy with a buffet of gory treats says Matt D D Donato of <laughs> Flickering Myth. Sorry. A young couple travels to a shady Eastern European hospital for plastic surgery. The young woman wants a breast reduction. Her mother comes along for yet another facelift. Wandering through an abandoned ward, the boyfriend stumbles upon a young woman, gagged and strapped to an operating table. She's the result of experimental rejuvenation treatment. He frees her, but doesn't realize she's patient zero, and he just caused the outbreak of a virus that will change the doctors, patients, and his mother-in-law into bloodthirsty zombies. Well, that's a bit of a spoiler. Bonus features include Director's Diary, Web Promos, Short Film Patient Zero, Short Film Striker Bob, and Trailers. Runs a nice tight 88 minutes. Uh, Lars Demoiso? So? I cannot, I cannot pronounce French. I'm very sorry for that. Um, yeah, this is a uh, region A, B, and C. Made in Canada, in Canada. 
But yeah, no, this is like a super fun movie. Uh, the gore is fun, the characters are likable, the lighting was good for what I remember. It's been a couple months since I've seen this, and um, this is something I'm actually very, I'll be very excited to revisit, because I know I had a really good time with it, and I probably watched it really late, and now I can watch it um, probably even later, because I just keep losing more and more sleep these days, because I do too much. Uh, <laughs> but that's gonna be a really, really fun time. I like on the front, too, that it's uh, the tagline is, Facelifts, boob jobs, and zombies. And that's a really gruesome cover. I'm amazed. I guess they wouldn't put that on shelves in a lot of stores. That's probably where they have a slip cover version, which might be what I have. And I guess while we're waiting for this trailer to pan out, although I've been really lax about scanning my movies into my app lately, so I may have it and it may not be in my app, but I'm gonna take a look, because I believe the trailer is still playing, <clears throat> or at least, uh, you know, we're getting close. If not, oh, I do have it, okay. But I definitely have a different cover for it, so that's cool. And I don't know that ours actually has those special features. Hmm. And this, this release doesn't say anything about Shudder. Mine definitely is the Shudder edition. So if nothing else, as a collector, that's cool because I have various cover arts and I definitely, definitely dig something like that. I don't think this uh, movie trailer is that long, so I think we're ready to move on to the next movie. But I gotta kinda peek at the spines here. I can't remember if I flipped this over or not. And I wanna make sure I don't, uh, you know, pull out the collector's edition. I'm thinking I didn't because, come on, how do I do this? How do I do this without looking at what the titles are? Okay, I did not flip it over. There we go. They are consistent in how they pack these, so <laughs> that's nice. All right, so let's get to the next movie. Next up we have, ooh, I haven't seen this in a long time, but this is an excellent movie. All right, I may have these, but you're two for two already, so this month is shaping up. Um, we have Jack Ketchum's The Lost. This dude writes some really dark, dark stuff. And this is another awesome movie. It's not quite The Woman, which is like probably his best one, but um, which just got like an Arrow release recently, but I've got that. I'm sure I have this, but that's okay, because I'm definitely looking forward to watching this again. Because it is, it is, well, I mean, <laughs> looking forward, I don't know, man. These, these are some pretty heavy, pretty heavy movie. This is not for Mary. <laughs> I don't think either of these have been ones she would enjoy yet. A must-see, a slice of CNN pie. What? Of CNN pie that corkscrews down into hell, says Toby's T Toby Hooper, director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's weird. Uh, I wonder if that's a typo. A relentless epic of human horror from the author of Off Season and The Girl Next Door. Actually, it's The Girl Next Door I was thinking about, not The Woman. The Woman's pretty good, though. Um, and Off Season, I, I, I vaguely remember Off Season. Maybe I need to watch that again. Once upon a time, a boy named Ray Pye put crushed beer cans in his boots to make himself taller. But this is no fairy tale. For suburban sociopath Ray and his friends, small town life is a dead end road of sex, drugs, liars, and losers. And what begins with a sudden act of senseless violence will climax in a mind blowing frenzy of depravity, with the worst still yet to come. Michael Bowen from Kill Bill. D. Wallace Stone, Rob Zombie's Halloween, and a bunch of other great stuff. Ed Lauder from True Romance. Great movie, I need to watch that again. Megan Henning from Seventh Heaven. Katie Cassidy from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. And Aaron Brown, AKA Misty Monday. That's right, that's right. I'm familiar with her work. Co-star in this controversial shocker, adapted from the infamous novel by Jack Ketchum, and based on the true story that stunned America. Uh, written for the screen, produced and directed by Chris Sivert, Sivertson, 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 the T is before the S, it's confusing my brain. Um, 119 minutes, not rated, this is the Anchor Bay release, and this looks like it's approximately 2010. So uh, that's pretty cool, and yeah man, I just know these are some, you know, uh, maybe not as intense as something like Martyrs or something, but you know, it's it's getting up in that class of film. Again, it's been a while since I've seen this, so I don't remember for sure. And again, while we wait and make sure we've left enough time for the trailer, I will double check that I actually do have this on Blu-ray. Uh, I should, 2010. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be Blu-ray. But we're gonna double check, because it gives me something to do while I kill some time for the trailer to stop playing. Uh, yeah, we have this exact edition, but it's fine. Nothing else, I'll give it to a friend or something. But yeah, that should be a good time. You think that trailer's done? If it's not, I'm cutting off the end. That's fine. All right, let's move on. Let's check out movie number three. 
So far, we're zero for two in terms of getting something I don't have, but uh, well, I guess one and a half for two because I do have a different version. This is shrink wrapped in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a with a slip case, so this might be Shout Factory. What do we got? Oh, damn it. Okay, this is good too, and I have it. Um, we have uh, Panic. Why is it just called Panic? Okay, this is called Satanic Panic, and that's why the slip cover is on here and shrink wrap. This must be like a Walmart release or something where they wouldn't want to put the word Satanic up here because it's 2021 and people are still freaking crazy. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind that this artwork is going to show as Panic. This is absolutely called Satanic Panic. And again, I believe I watched this on show. No, I think I actually did watch this on my Blu-ray. So unfortunately, we have all the movies this month except for the exclusive. So that sucks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, here's the back of it. You know, just kind of give you a nice little look-see and a taste. I wonder if they'll actually say the real title anywhere. Let's see, yeah, here in the credit block, they have the actual title at least. So that's nice. And here is the front. But it's kind of neat to have the slipcase. Again, I, this is an alternate for me because I did not have this version of the slipcase. So I at least can count that. All right. Gory, funny, self-aware, and unique, says Dread Central, from the author of My Best Friend's Exorcism. I don't know that one. Sam's first day as a pizza delivery driver is not going according to plan. At the end of a long day and not enough tips, her last delivery turns out to be one for a group of Satanists looking for someone to sacrifice. Now in a fight for her life, Sam must fend off witches, evil spells, and demonic creatures, all while trying to keep her body and soul intact. Starring Haley Griffith of The Loudest Voice, Rudy, oh sorry, Ruby Modine of Happy Death Day franchise, Jerry O'Connell from Billions, and Rebecca Romaine from the X-Men franchise, and Star Trek um, Discovery, S Star Trek, excuse me, Satanic Panic will satisfy any viewer's need for monsters, mayhem, and jokes. Robert uh, Saucedo of birth.movies.death. Interesting. Special features, the making of Satanic Panic, Sam and Judy, and Girl Power. Directed by Chelsea Stardust. And it runs at a tight 90 or 89 minutes, so that's pretty good as well. And, uh... Yeah, um, I do remember enjoying this. I remember, I think there was some hype for it and I was a little bit underwhelmed in the hype department, but not terribly underwhelmed, just a little bit underwhelmed. But, uh, you know, going back in, giving it a second viewing will probably help out quite a bit. Um, I find a lot of movies, not all movies, but a good chunk of movies are a little bit more enjoyable on the second viewing, uh, especially if it's something that has been out for a little while and it's had time for hype to build around it. So keep that in mind, because I see a lot of people like, I'll watch something that's great, and a lot of people are saying it's great, and we all hype it as great, and then somebody watches it like a year later, and they're like, I don't get it. I don't see what's so great about it. And it's like, well, because we overhyped it for you, <laughs> you know? Uh, and that happens to me, that happens to all of us, and it is an unfortunate side effect of doing this stuff sometimes, or watching so many movies sometimes, or just watching movies in general. Oh, that makes me want to go down a tangent of complaining about people's lack of understanding of the art of cinema. But um, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I can do that on live streams when I get real drunk. That's what we do. Drunken movie nights. That's where Eric complains about people uh, disrespecting art. <laughs> All right, well, that's like two and a half minutes, so I'm going to assume the trailer played, or I'll just chop off a little bit of it. And now for the moment of truth. <sighs> the exclusive. Will it be interesting? Will it be good? Will it be awful? How bad will the cover art be? Because the art has just been not good. It's like declining lately, and even like the quality of the printing. And I would love to see them change that because that's like, this is the selling point of the box really more than anything. And you gotta step that game up, man. Like I I'm trying to help y'all promote this and get that out there because I do love my horror films and movies in general, but it's getting harder. I'm seeing in some of my comments, it's like people are getting turned off by the quality of some of these things. So come on, step it up, horror pack. I believe in you, you can do it. Um, all right, what do we got? Okay, okay, okay. I don't know about the movie or anything, but the art looks good. So I'm glad I said that speech just in time for me to be proven wrong. <laughs> we have a movie, Werewolf, Sur Survive the Dogs of War. Interesting, okay. I do not have this, and this actually looks like this could be really, really good. This might be something Mary would be down for. So 
Here's the back of it. As you can see, it's a proper back. It has the credit block. It has the special feature section, a description, proper pictures, good printing, all the information. I'm pretty sure they did not design this. I think they just threw the Horror Pack logo and the number on the spine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the feeling I'm getting. But if this is their design, then awesome, great job. And a uh, good thing we're doing this better now. And here's the cover. So you can get a good look at that. Nice. All right, and here we go. Summer 1945. A temporary orphanage is established in an abandoned palace surrounded by forests for the eight children liberated from the Gross Rosen camp. Hanka, also a former inmate, becomes their guardian. After the atrocities of the camp, the protagonists slowly begin to regain what is left of their childhood but the horror returns quickly. Camp Alstalian, Al Alstalian? Camp Alstations, Alstations. Uh, Camp Alstations, sure, roam the forest around. Released by the SS earlier on, they have gone feral and are starving. Looking for food, they besiege the palace. The children are terrified and their camp survival instinct is triggered. Bonus features, still gallery, and trailers. Looks like this runs at 88 minutes. It's not rated. Adrian Panic is written and directed by. Of course, I'm not really going to recognize any of these other names. But it's very, very indie. It is Horror Pack release number 56. And uh, that actually sounds pretty cool. Like, that sounds kind of dark and gloomy and intense and something interesting and this is, this feels like, um, this is a, well, I can already tell you because I have seen these three. This is a much stronger horror pack. They really, they really amped it up uh, for February. And also, these are these are all technically, they have not not love stories, but they have love story elements. Technically, I think it's been a while in the Lost. I'm not sure there, but um, but yeah, but even Werewolf actually. I mean, that that seems like a big step up. Maybe they have to take a step down one episode to step back up for another one. And. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very much looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to watching all of these. This is going to be a really good run this time. So, excellent job, Horror Pack. I'm, I'm proud of you. You've done a very good thing here. <laughs> very, very good. And I know we don't have this, so I'll double check in my app. But there's no way, like... I mean, we probably have a movie called Werewolf, but I doubt we have that one. Werewolf. Kind of thought there might be more of a lover romantic uh, vibe going on this uh, month, but totally understandable that it isn't. No, we do not have that. We have a different movie called Werewolf, but it is not that one. And I never muted my phone, but luckily, no one's uh, partying, up, partying it up on Discord at the moment, so it ain't going off like crazy. All right, so that's probably enough of that, and that is the movies, and they are great. Um, I don't know about this one. I'm excited for it. This is going to be the, probably the best of these movies, but this is the most fun of these movies, and this is just a good time. So, so I know, even before we get to the actual reviews, and I've probably reviewed at least one of these on my Patreon, but whatever, we'll give it the second viewing review. Those reviews are different. All right, and uh, speaking of all that, I guess let's do it, shall we? Let's talk about these movies. All right, so yummy. Every bit as much fun the second time around, maybe even a little more fun because I knew what I was in for and I knew what shortcomings would bother me and what I would love. And for the most part, this is a great time. Um, it's ridiculous. It's silly in the best of ways, but not like awful silly, not not trying to be good, bad, silly, just silly. Not quite dead alive silly, although they were definitely aiming for dead alive gore. And I think in a lot of places they got there. I do love, I kind of love the bumbling hero. He, he, hero, I mean, he, he kind of works in this. Um, I do love the ending of this film. It's kind of got a bit of a wicked sense of humor. The gore is fantastic. The characters are interesting. The pacing happens quickly. The cinematography, the lighting, the color, all that's great. Um, German Brad Pitt is very charismatic. <laughs> I enjoy him all through the film, even though maybe you're not really supposed to care that much for him. Um, some of the twists and turns, some shocking moments that come out of the blue are fantastic. Um, you know, and even just the characterizations in the beginning and uh they set up some tropes but they also kind of subvert expectations with some of those tropes and where they want to take it and it's just a great time and again very very gruesome and um also uh, there there is a real there's a there's an awesome awesome like looney tunes-esque genital gag in here um 
that I will say the first time I saw it and you see the first thing, it's like, Ugh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do one of these like fake gore things or something, but it's awesome. I don't wanna ruin it for you. It's, it's, it, yeah, you need to see this movie even just for that. Um, <laughs> and the zombie, the, the zombie design, designs are fantastic in this too. Uh, again, great gore work on them, but just their designs, their faces, because it is all in a uh, uh, plastic surgery clinic, basically. So a lot of uh, people mid-surgery and stuff. Um, there's an awesome <sighs> liposuction scene. That's really gross. Um, there are times in this movie, at least on the second time, I didn't notice, all right, it's late. I didn't notice it as much the first time, but um, on the second time, there's a few places in here where they've done an expert job of hiding a lack of a budget. Uh, the movie does not feel low budget. It feels like it's got a lot going on, but there's a couple of moments in here, which is a great thing. Great filmmaking does. Um, at least the first time I thought there were some things I saw in this that you don't actually see. They do kind of cut around some things like, you know, like a car hitting into a wall kind of deal, something like that. Um, like I, my brain filled it in originally. And this time I just kind of happened to notice. I'm like, Oh, they don't actually show that moment. So, um, but that's great. I think they did a great job with that kind of stuff. And yeah, I knew I would like it. It's a good time. I do have the wide release. I don't know if it's the wide, wider release or not. Uh, the shutter version, completely different slip cover, completely different box art. Um, so it's nice to have both versions. I do believe there's some different special features as well. So this is a great find from Horror Pack. Definitely, again, um, this month is much better than last and I'm digging the hell out of it. So that's my thoughts on Yummy. Uh, either grab a Blu-ray, go check it out on Shudder if it's still there. It's absolutely worth your time. It's probably one of the, I don't, it's hard for me to say what is or isn't underrated. I don't know how well known this movie is or popular, but if you've not heard of it, you definitely gotta check it out if you like zombie stuff. So there you go, Yummy, Yummy. All right, so I watched The Lost based on the Jack Ketchum novel. Um, now that I know what Jack Ketchum looks like these days, or did, Sadly, the gentleman passed away a few years ago. Uh, I noticed him in the cameo. He's the bartender. I'm going to try and keep this no spoilers. Uh, my overall impression is I am left st still dumbfounded and shook and fucked up. Um, I remember these movies, his writing being really brutal and intense. And uh, watching this movie, it started off that way. And then it kind of just goes on for a while without really having too much suspense or terror in this version. Uh, I think, uh, not that this was poorly made, but I think other filmmakers would probably do more with this. But, while it does meander for a while at a two hour pace, um, it doesn't necessarily get boring. Characters interesting and everything. A few little payoffs we didn't get, I would have liked to seen in some of the characters, but overall, it is kind of a slow burn basically. And in the last 20, 30 minutes when it starts burning, um, it's really fucking harsh. Uh, <laughs> like, disturbing harsh. And coming from somebody who watches a lot of these kind of movies and likes these kind of movies. And I think, in a lot of ways, this one's even probably more poignant today. Um, it doesn't quite exactly fit certain issues of the day, but it fits close enough. And in some broad strokes, absolutely, it makes it actually more brutal and more terrifying. Um, you know, kind of a lot of gunman violence for, for, for lack of anything else. Uh, although there's, it, when it really starts going, it really starts piling on and it's hard to, it's, I actually, I legit felt uncomfortable. It's, I recall this is not as brutal as the girl next door, the Jack Ketchum one, uh, which I kind of want to rewatch in that like masochistic uh, way of let me torture myself some more with this. Uh, I mean, you could make a case that in a sense these are torture porn, but more uh, like the high class ones because like you know again characterization and stuff like that. It's it's interesting. It's it's uh, it's almost vaguely Stephen King esque if he if Stephen King wasn't being. Uh, supernatural at all and was just doing brutal human type type of violence uh, <laughs> plus to keep in mind this is an, an older film like 2006 or something like that but also it, I think it's based on a book that was written in like the 80s early 80s so I think that flavor is showing up in here um, and explains a few of maybe the logic things of why aren't somebody calling or why aren't the cops already blah 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 it's a small town early 80s 
knowing that there's some things that could make more sense than they do. Uh, but yeah, and the ending, I, I really, I have a love hate and relationship with the ending again, not spoiling anything, but it's a very satisfying, appropriate ending, but it's also unsatisfying in some ways. Um, in the sense that I almost, if nothing else, would like some like title cards or something, that cliche of so-and-so went on to do this, so-and-so went on to do or something. I, I don't know, but damn, man, damn. Um, yeah, fuck. It's just, it's, it's still, uh, and again, I think I got lulled into a false sense of security, honestly. Like it starts off a little bit brutal. Um, and then that kind of goes away for a good long chunk of the movie. And where the filmmaking itself isn't the best. It's not terrible, but it's not the best. There are some awkward transitions in here. There's some awkward shot transitions, scene transitions. Pacing is a little strange at times. Um, but some of the cinematography or like the like shot composition at least is very good. The sound, the dialogue is not the quality. The audio quality is not the best. Um, it's kind of all over the place in terms of volume at times. The transfer, this is a fucking cheap ass blu-ray from anchor bay or whoever actually released this um there's no menu even uh and like sections of the film are insanely dirty like there's no cleanup on that these are minor gripes but yeah but yeah man the lost i mean you know i would it's a different oops it's a different kind of brutal from something like martyr martyrs in a way um but i would kind of put it in that class like i feel just as like disgusted and kind of bummed out from the movie <laughs> as I would a film like that. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not to those quite those exten extensive amounts of violence in a film like that, but I'm, I'm kind of walking away with that same emptiness and coldness that, ugh, I liked a lot more when I was younger and less happy. <laughs> I still appreciate it though. I do. I mean, like just getting to, you know, sort of a safe way to feel things I hope I never have to feel in the unsafe real world, if you will. Whew, it's harsh, man. Then again, age and perspective and life changes really, it's fun to kind of rewatch these things and revisit them with different perspectives. Um, Cause again, I liked it, but I certainly would have felt for more for different characters than I did in this less for other characters. Like, you know, just time and perspective changes. And certainly some of the, what would you do is just like, All right, anyways, it is like after three in the morning and I still got to watch one more movie because I'm doing this. It's actually already today, Tuesday, when this video comes out. So <laughs> procrastination is wonderful. All right, anyway, so if any of that sounds good, check out The Lost. You won't be disappointed. You can get it pretty goddamn cheap, I'm sure. So it's been out long enough is what I'm saying. All right, next movie. Yes, not being Reggie. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Satanic Panic. This will be my second viewing, and Mary decided she'd watch this one with me. It looked like it might be funny. <laughs> yeah, and um, I remember the first time, I probably did a review on Patreon, but I remember the first time being rather disappointed in this because it starts off really strong, has a great premise, it has great potential, and then I just find it does some things a little too silly, a little... It doesn't either go a far enough in the absurdity or, or goes too far with it. Like, it rides in the middle in some places where it's like, okay... Knowing that going in a second time, I enjoyed it more. Uh, I probably picked up a little bit more, especially kind of knowing some of the twists and turns. So I saw some more of the foreshadowing and the setup than I had before. Mm -hmm. um, pace is still fine. It's enjoyable. There's some good stuff in here, the performances and everything. Rebecca Romaine Samos, uh, Jerry O'Connell, you know, uh, the main uh, lady and mm -hmm. some other stuff. But uh, overall, I really liked it. But I'd be curious to get a little bit more of her thoughts real fast. <laughs> thoughts? I have to have thoughts. No. Uh, <laughs> now, um... It was, okay, admittedly, it was a little gory in places for me. Uh, she did have to look away from a certain intestine scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, it was uh, pretty, uh, I, I, it's a fun little flick. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, Outside Your Ocon and, uh, is it Romaine? Uh, Rebecca Romaine. Yeah, yeah, I said Stamos, but I guess not anymore. <laughs> um... Is this like there's a couple other actors you're sitting there like, what have I seen you in? Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and some people look like you. By the way, just for fun, we watched it on the big old projector, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it could 
stand to kind of decide. It's, it's, it does that, straddle that line of does it want to be kind of serious or, or does it want to be camp? Right. And I think, too, the problem with it is even though the comedy elements of it work, like it's charming and kind of goofy and comedic, that takes away from any actual horrific element. Like there's no real sense of dread or fear in this, I don't think, because I, for the most actually, part, the characters are rather bumbling. Well, mm. the, for the final act, I was going like, oh, I guess they're not getting out of this. Yeah, and even that, again, without getting too spoilery, it's like... I don't know if it's a budget thing, but it's kind of a disappointing ending. Like, that's how we're going to deal with everything. I mean, you, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not disappointed in how it ends, just necessarily the execution of the ending. In terms of this was a prime opportunity for a movie called Satanic Panic to be much more gruesome in that ending sequence, and it is like not. I, I kind of, <laughs> it does kind of feel like uh, we're out of budget. We need yeah. out of budget. We're out of budget. So, so we'll just do just, this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're trying to tiptoe around spoilers too here. Um, and speaking of that, one other tiptoe. And again, one of those things where it's like, well, I mean, if you're going to go full on into a- absurdity, let's go into absurdity. But otherwise, you just have this one moment with a particular intended killing implement. Mm-hmm. Um, the very obvious, feels like a Guar show kind of thing. Uh, I was like, that always, to me, both times, I'm just like, that is so, what? I mean, I... <laughs> It's not really built up enough, and then they don't do more stuff like that, so it feels very out of place. I assume you know what I'm talking to you about. You look like you're kind of trying to figure it out. I, I am trying to figure the it out. The very obviously goofy way of killing somebody that was supposed to happen. Oh, uh, okay. Very okay. early. Um, Post-Coca-Cola drinking. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> There we go. I got her. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like that feels like something like she'd be at a Guar show, and it's like, okay, yeah. I'm cool with that being in the movie, but you got to give me more of that, or you needed to build it up more. It's just like a one-and-done kind of deal, and nothing else ever reaches that yeah, level yeah, of absurdity. That, that's, yeah, that, that was sort of peak camp right there. Right, and that's where I think my biggest problem is, is tonally this movie doesn't quite land, or doesn't quite know. It feels like it doesn't know where it wants to go, or they did not land where they were trying to go. Um, and there's a couple of shocking moments too, you know. I mean, you're rooting for the characters and against other characters and things like that. But <laughs> again, you have creepy cultists. You could have done some creepy shots, like instead of like being with the cultists in some of the shots when they go to surround a house and like kind of shooting from underneath them from behind. Mm-hmm. It's more creepy if you like have one of the characters realize they're there by looking out the window and you just see a bunch of the hooded figures start s- surrounding the place. Like little things like that would add more to the horror and take away from the camp and. Um, You know, I mean, I'm being super specific and nitpicky, I guess, but I do like the way a lot of the magic stuff worked and the gruesome goriness of the magic stuff was pretty fun that they made it like really like blood magic and stuff like that. Yeah. So I appreciated that. And, uh, you know, some of like the counter spells and things like that. And I think all that kind of stuff was pretty fun. And uh, Mm -hmm. Jerry O'Connell, man. (laughs) (laughs) Um but yeah, and again, I mean, I like the and I like the reveal. I like they set up the main characters this one kind of thing, and then they kind of give you a little bit of her backstory and an intense moment in the film that really gives some beautiful. Uh... <laughs> you pulling got something? Okay, uh, grounding, <laughs> grounding. <laughs> Good boy, Napoleon. I'm just, now I'm trying to remember what I was saying. Um. Oh, gives him like real more grounding to her backstory, like from the end, from the beginning. And you kind of go back mm-hmm. to some early things like, oh, 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 <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think that was pretty good. I th- again, I think the characterizations are everything are good. I think it's just, I, I think this might be like a first time or at least very early director. Um, and that kind of shows. But again, it's somebody I would root for as to hopefully get to make more things. And I imagine they will improve um, a great deal, hopefully. Because uh, there's definite potential in here, and it's a really good movie. I mean, like if this is something, if you're into these kind of movies, you find it for like ten bucks or something. It's absolutely, it's absolutely worth that buy. Uh, you'll have a good time with it. But it's just not. I, I think if anything, I'm being a little harder on it myself because I feel like the potential of it being something really classic is there, mm-hmm. and it doesn't quite land that level. But it still lands really, really good time to watch. That's my take. But I know more of horror films and stuff like this too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts? No. Good, because my hand's getting heavy, and maybe we'll watch King Kong or something. I don't know. All right, next movie. All right, so uh, Werewolf. 
obviously title pretty misleading um no big spoilers here or anything but you know it's not that kind of movie don't go into it looking for that you're not going to get that what you are going to get is an amazing dramatic horror film uh and by that i mean this it absolutely has horror and suspense there are moments i was just pushing back into my seat like and then sometimes paid off, sometimes not. Like keeping you on the edge of your seat, keeping you in suspense of, is something gonna happen? Something feels like it's gonna happen every single second. Something feels like it's going to happen. This is dripping with style and finesse and amazing performances from a cast that is pretty much all children. Um, it, it is foreign, it is subtitled. I don't know if there's a dub track, um, but there's not that much dialogue in it so I, I don't even think it's so much about the dialogue it's uh it, 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 i mean it's but it's not like so dry it's boring or anything the sound design is excellent the tension is excellent the what would you do element the what would these kids do in this element and like it's not just the wolves and stuff uh, wolves um you know it's the hunger the the dehydration the isolation um the era the timing the brokenness of them to which again without being spoilery they do some great character stuff with like the three like i would say the three mainish kids in here um particularly a certain uh dynamic between a duo and how they play that out and where they go with it and and um, just the suspense, even in that, just in that human relationship and the fear of what could be done or what could happen is phenomenal. Uh, this was excellent. I mean, like legit, this is a great fucking movie. Um, again, not if you're looking for like extreme horror, you're not gonna get that, it, it's, but it's very suspenseful. It's very frightening. It's very, you know, sad and depressing in the, in the truth of it. But at the same time, it's just expertly made. It's just a great, a wonderfully made film. Uh, I'm guessing it's low budget. I don't know. Like, it doesn't feel like it. it. You could say that because they're trapped in one place, but I don't know. But it's just, it's so well done. Just from start to finish. This is a great one. This is one I'm excited to rewatch again and again and again. And I'm amazed. Um, Horror Pack knocked it out of the park. This is an amazing exclusive. And this is the kind of stuff I want to get out of my horror packs. Something I never would have noticed, even if I was as plugged into the indie horror scene um, as I would like to be at the moment. I'm fairly plugged in, but not as deep as I'd like to be. Uh, going even deeper into like the foreign indie horror, I probably never would have had this come across my radar. Unless like Joe Bob did it on Shudder or something. But this is amazing. This is a great movie. Like, seriously, this is going to be what I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, this is going to be more one of those I'm going to recommend more and more to people. So I'm recommending it to you, horror pack or no horror pack. If you like, sorry, it's 5 a.m. If you like, like, well done, well crafted um, adult horror, uh, and that's not to knock the popcorn horror or the cheesy horror that I love so much um, at all. Uh, this is certainly, this is going to be up your alley. I was just thinking in, in terms of the entire horror pack, I was about to say this is the best and the darkest, but it's not the darkest. The Lost is pretty freaking dark and har harsh. Um, and this has its darkness and its harshness, but I don't feel as, my soul doesn't feel as crushed from this movie. But I also feel I was taken on more of an interesting ride and um, interesting mood and atmosphere and tone. Yeah, I just, this was awesome. I can't recommend this enough. And this has been an amazing horror pack. Every single movie in this month's horror pack is a great freaking movie. Um, Yummy is incredibly fun. Werewolf is something I'm going to recommend to everybody and watch again and again. Satanic Panic is getting better with each viewing. I always enjoyed it, but it's better with each viewing. And again, The Lost is disturbing and soul-crushing in the way that often a lot of us horror fans look for something like that in a film. So just, just amazing. This is a great horror pack. This is one of the standout horror packs in all the years I've been buying them. Um, and just capping it off with Werewolf. I'm used to the special edition not being the best movie in the box with some exceptions. There's been some exceptions, but um, 
this time it was just like, wow. Uh, I was just riveted, just absolutely riveted. Like I said, I mean, it's five in the morning. I have to do this because I'm out of time to do these. I, I would love to have watched this earlier, but it did not make me sleepy. I was not exhausted. I did not like just drift at all. Um, and it's great. It's great on every aspect of the filmmaking and everything. But anyways, there you go. That's my thoughts on Werewolf. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Again, you know, kind of a somber film, but amazing. Um, so that's my thoughts, and that's Horror Pack this month. Well, let's go back to finishing the unboxing. All right, so there you have it. A much, much, much stronger Horror Pack this month in every way. As long as this movie is even medium okay, then this is one of the best Horror Packs we've had in a while, and maybe one of the best Horror Packs they've put out. So big redemption from last month, which was one of the worst Horror Packs they've ever put out. Um, so I'm very happy. And they even got great art front and back on their exclusive this time around, so yay! And like I said, even two of the three that I already own, they have an alternate art thing happening via the censored slipcover and, um, you know, not being the shutter release. So as a collector of films, that makes me happy too. So all the way around, kudos everywhere, three snaps up or whatever, I don't know. But what do you all think? Have you seen these movies? Which is your favorite? What do you think? You agree? You disagree? Are you happy this horror pack came back swinging this month? Let me hear your thoughts. Definitely geek out with me in the comments. I love hearing what you have to say. Other than that, you can click that thumbs up button. Give me that good old thumb of encouragement, as I do love to be encouraged. Then check out the join button for YouTube memberships, the Patreon link, the merch store, and of course the Discord invite, because you want to come on over and have a good time with us. We're having a blast over there, man, so come join us, y'all. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. It's a cool peeps party. I figure you're all cool. You're all invited. If you start not being cool, then you get kicked from the party. That's all. And I mean, I'm being a jerk, you know? I mean, we love nerds and geeks and everything. So come on over and show, show your passions. That's what we love. That's what makes you cool is passion, baby. All right. So anyways, that's all said and done. So I'm going to get on out of here so I can go open up some more stuff and watch some more movies. And I'll see you all later.